more than 5,000 people were injured. According to the mayor of Beirut, more than 300,000 people became homeless. And the population of Beirut is approximately 2 million. So 15% of Baby, you can call me a superman. Chuchu tell ta ta gani ta Hey yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to our channel. It's your boy Jesse Keegan, and we are Fanny and Jesse. Thank you so much for you know being part of the family. Thank you so much for subscribing. You're the realest MVP. And today we're gonna do another reaction, and this one right here is such an amazing reaction. This is you know kind of touchy and uh with a lot of emotions i don't know but i haven't checked the reaction yet but it's something that happened try uh it's something that happened um a week ago and i felt like um it's something that probably let me just listen to and this is dr zaki naik who's talking about it and i just want to let you know that today we are reacting to the beirut explosion action to be taken and lessons to be learned First of all, before I even start the reaction, I want to send all the condolences to the people of Beirut. And yeah, I mean, I uh, hope everything is going well now. I hope that you're holding in tight uh, with all this thing that is happening around and whatnot. But anyway, guys, so without any further ado, man, let's get it. Before we start taking the questions, I'd like to speak for a few minutes on the Beirut explosion actions to be taken and lessons to be learned as many of you may be aware four days ago there was a massive explosion in Beirut on Tuesday on the 4th of August 2020 at 6 o'clock in the evening that's Beirut time or 3 p.m. GMT and in this massive explosion, it was one of the greatest explosions in the recent time, in which more than 150 people were killed and more than 5,000 people were injured and more than 300,000 people became homeless. According to the president of Lebanon, the cause of this massive explosion in Beirut was because of 2,750 tons of ammonium nitrate that was stored in the Beirut port in warehouse number 12. And this 2,750 tons of ammonium nitrate was stored about seven years ago in 2013 when a ship was traveling from Gibraltar to Mozambique and it halted on the Beirut port and there was a technical problem in that ship because of which it had to stop in Beirut and the owner of the ship he abandoned the ship because of which a court order was taken where this 2,750 tons of ammonium nitrate was stored at the Beirut port in warehouse number 12. Actually, this 2,750 ton, it was supposed to be sold or disposed of, even though several reminders were sent to the court and to the government by the port authorities for the last several years, no action was taken. This ammonium nitrate is actually used as a source of nitrogen for agriculture fertilizers. It's also used along with fuel and oil for explosives, for mining or in construction industry. It has also been used by militants as an explosive. Actually, this ammonium nitrate to store is very safe as long as you take precaution. But if you do not take precautions, over time it may absorb the moisture, it may turn into a rock and it's very dangerous that it can be inflammable. According to the manager of the port of Beirut, 
there was a request for repairing the door of warehouse 12 and because of which they were doing some welding to the door of the warehouse number 12 and after that it was in according to reports we have come to know that there was a fire at the Beirut port at 6 o'clock, 11 in time, very close to warehouse number 12. And later on, the roof of the warehouse number 12 caught fire at 6 o'clock, 11 in time. And few seconds later, there were many explosions. People thought it was fireworks. And 30 seconds later, there was an enormous, massive explosion which ruined many structures and buildings around the vicinity of the port and the effects were for kilometers and the window of the international port of Beirut which is nine kilometers away from the site of explosion the windows were shattered 200 kilometers across the Mediterranean Sea the explosion could be heard in Cyprus according to the reading they said the explosion was equal to 3.3 scale of earthquake it was massive and because of this explosion there was a crater created of 140 meters wide and very deep at the site of the warehouse where water accumulated and there was a ship which was closed which was blown to the dock because of the explosion and in this explosion more than 150 innocent human beings were killed more than 5000 people were injured according to the mayor of Beirut more than 300,000 people became homeless and the population of Beirut is approximately 2 million so 15% of the population of Beirut, they became homeless. And half to one million people, directly or indirectly, were affected by this blast. This was an accident, it was negligence. What action should be taken? I request the Muslims all over the world that the least we can do is pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the people who are affected by this blast and as we know more than 61 percent of the population of Lebanon they are Muslims more than 52 percent of the population of Beirut they are Muslims and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he forgive the Muslims who have died in this blast and may grant them Jannah and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he ease the difficulties of the Muslims and non-Muslim families who have died in this blast may he elevate and may he make it easy for the people who have been affected in this blast may he give shifa may he cure the people who have been injured in this blast and may he give shelter to the people who have become homeless and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ease the suffering of all those people of Lebanon who have been affected directly or indirectly in this blast. The least the Muslims can do is pray for the people affected by this blast. The second thing we can do is we can support financially whatever we can to help the victims of this blast. And Alhamdulillah, there are many charities, Muslim and non-Muslim NGOs in Lebanon and in different parts of the world which have started collecting funds we have in America and European countries and different parts of the world. And Alhamdulillah, I request the Muslims that whatever your capacity, whether big or small, whatever you can, we should become part and try and support this noble cause with whatever amount that we can. The third we can do is those people in Lebanon or in Beirut who have not been affected by this blast should support the people who have been affected by this blast. There may be people of Lebanon who may be less affected. They can support the people who have been more affected. We require volunteers at the ground level 
to help the people who are injured, to help the people who have become homeless, to help the people who may not have food to eat because of the situation that took place suddenly because of the massive explosion, because of this blast. Whatever we can physically, because of the pandemic which is there, the COVID-19, it may be difficult for the foreigners to enter Lebanon, but yet there are people who are trying. Whoever can physically support, they should. And last what we can do is try and spread this message that we should not be negligent about the information of the blast, the actions to be taken, and the lessons to be learned. What can we as Muslims learn from this tragedy? Number one, we should not be negligent. This tragedy happened because of negligence. We should see to it that we should be careful and we should take precautions wherever required. For example, we should see to it that in our home, we have the kitchen, many people keep the gas open, unattended. There may be someone who lights a fire and there can be explosion in the kitchen. We keep and we store things, inflammable, in the wrong place, which is wrong. And we may not be careful in how we store the inflammable items. All these are lessons to be learned, that we have to be careful and we should not be negligent. The second thing to be learned is that we do not know when will be our last day of our life in this world. Normally, many of the Muslims, we pray for the Muslims all over the world that are suffering. And I too, every tahajjud, I pray for all the Muslims in the world who are suffering. And I particularly take the names of the people who are suffering in Yemen, the Muslims in Afghanistan, the Muslims in Kashmir, the Muslims of India that are being persecuted by the Indian government, the Muslims in Bangladesh. And the list is wrong. I take the names of the people who are more persecuted. But generally, we pray for all the Muslims, even the others which are being persecuted in different parts of the world. We know that amongst the Muslim countries in the world that are there, maybe 25% are being persecuted on a great level because of the persecution maybe in China or maybe in Burma or maybe in Palestine or Syria or Yemen because of persecution or because of war. There may be another percentage that may be less persecuted or less oppressed. There may be some living in a country where there may be very little problem for them. And many times these people living in the country where there is not a major problem may think and pray for the people, for the Muslims of other parts of the world, but they may think that these people, because of the war zone, may die in time. But they may never think that even they too can face a calamity. And what happened in Beirut? I'm sure that almost all the people who may have been killed they may never have thought that that was going to be the last day of their life. They might never have thought that they will never see the next day in their life. So it's a lesson for us that irrespective of whichever part of the world you are living in, irrespective of what is your age, irrespective of what is your status, whether you are rich or poor, whether you are healthy or sick, you may never know when will be the last day of your life. That's the reason. A Muslim normally should lead a life and should be prepared that maybe today is the last day of his life. So what should he do? We should take a lesson from this, that we should be prepared to face our Lord if we are to die today. And for this, we should see to it that we should do all our faraiz and stay away from the haram activities. We should see to it that we believe in Tawheed that we pray five times a day, that we do all the faraiz and we stay away from the haram, the major sins and the minor sins also. If we are sure that we do all the faraiz and if we are staying away from the major sins, 
and we every day ask for forgiveness in our salah, in our tahajjud, then even though as we are human beings and we do sins, we can always hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that when we pray for forgiveness, when we do istighfar, inshallah Allah will forgive us. So if every day we offer salah and we ask for forgiveness for all the sins we are doing, if Allah forbid we have to die that day, inshallah it will be a great blessing for us. And inshallah there are high chances that we shall enter Jannah. So this is a lesson to be learned that we don't know how long we will live. We should be prepared that we will die today. At the same time, we should plan for our future. What we are going to do tomorrow, maybe after a few weeks, or a few months, or a few years. This is what a moment, a believer does. He plans for the future, but is prepared that he can die today. He may not live to see tomorrow. This is a lesson for us. What happened in Lebanon was accident. It was negligence. It can happen in any part of the world. Maybe we too can face a calamity. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may He forgive our sins and may He make us pray for the victim throughout the world, including the Beirut blast. And may we learn lesson from these incidents so that we can come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wow. That was amazing right there. But again, um, so much to take in. Man, that, that, that was bad. So like, um, I was reading an article just the other day and it was saying like, Beirut will never be the same again. And just thinking about it, like, it's crazy because when you look at the people who are affected, it's a massive number of people who are affected. Uh, more than 300,000 people are homeless or something like that. Uh, 3,000 injured, 100 and something uh, died. And just think about it, man. You know, you're in the middle of pandemic and then something tragic like that just happens. And uh, yesterday you're just living in a, I mean, just think about it. Like you, you, you uh, one second you're living a happy life and then the next second just something happens and it changes the whole aspect of life. That's really crazy. That's really crazy, man. Man. And um, thanks to the people who are donating, actually. That's so amazing. I will try and find um, a legible uh, donation link that it probably is going to go to the, the people who are um, who shares probably the donation or something like that. Uh, I'll find a legit one because uh, I, I understand at this period of time there are a lot of scammers out there who are trying to eat from who, who are trying to benefit from the uh, from the the scenario or probably um, the things that are happening around the world or something like that. So I'm gonna find a legit one. Probably gonna if you feel um, generous enough, you can just go on and delete on that donation link in the in the description below. But what I'm trying to say is that just like the way Dr. Zakinaik has just mentioned, it's good to be vigilant enough because uh, we could have, it could have been prevented, you know, if they had taken action a while ago. That was like seven years ago when those ammonium nitrates were stored in there and then they be became like stones and really hard You get it. And you know, ammonium nitrates, uh, those uh, are, are really um, explosive chemicals or something like that and they could have gotten rid of that like long time ago but probably I don't know it might be an accident but again in my heart I feel like all these things are somehow I don't know man I feel like I feel like there are no accidents there are no accidents some things are planned and they were meant to happen at that particular. Some people are evil. They do this thing to make humans suffer. You get it? You, you need to understand. And we're in the uh, we are in the month of August. This month of August, a lot of things normally happen. Like for example, I can just give you an example of what is happening around the world. Yeah. Just after the Beirut incidents, a lot of countries 
had the same experience but not as big as Beirut but there were fires like everywhere uh, when you look at Russia just the other day there was a, a bomb or something when you look at Congo the other day was some fires in a in a in a, in a what in a or some fire in a in a little like storage or warehouse or something and in Beirut this was I think in a, in a big warehouse or silos where they store grains they so they store probably fertilizer and all all those kind of things also in which country china i mean it's 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 been happening around it's been happening around you can just go check it out on on, on google it, it has been happening like close to 11 countries or maybe 13 countries have been affected um with fires and whatnot somebody told me that's not a coincidence hmm? is that a coincidence Sometimes I feel like they're no coincidence. These are things that were planned and arranged um, to happen probably simultaneously, or probably day by day, to just affect humans' energy. You get it? Just to make us feel at, at our lowest point. You get my point? But anyway, uh, whatever is happening around the world, hope this will stop soon. And for the people of Beirut, take heart, man. Um, better days are coming but remember we have to be vigilant enough and we have to prepare just like the way Dr. Zakina just mentioned let's prepare for the future preparation for the future is really good I know we live in the now but it's better to actually prepare but again as much as you want to prepare for the future there are some people out there who are planning our future for us and these are the governments that are existing today you get it which is so sad get it so but it's good to prepare for your future especially for the future generations because this is a generation that is gonna make changes around this world so if we make a better decision for them then good things are gonna happen to 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 them also uh yeah so i think that's what i wanted to react to today and if you have any kind of what do you call this if you have any kind of comment you think that you want to add on just let me know in the comment section below what do you think man what do you think about the whole issue that is happening in that happened in beirut and also what is happening around the world i know you can call it the end of the world uh, other people will say that um it's a new world that is being formed and the old one is being passed on or something like that i don't just let me know in the comment section below what do you think people have different beliefs just give me what you believe is i know uh, there are different uh, re religion on, on this platform just let me know in the comment section what do you think man what is happening around the world is all these things staged is all these things planned to make humans suffer what is happening why are innocent people dying people who have no idea of what is happening around the world why do they have to die just let me know just let me know in the comment section below it's not i feel it's not good somebody who innocent who has been living his life probably in a good way and all of a sudden boom i mean you know where to be seen and you're gone just let me know in the comment section below what do you think and um if you feel like i reacted this video in a better way just give me a thumbs up and don't forget to go down our comment section below and tell us exactly what you feel about the video over here and my reaction and also the most important thing uh the most important thing guys don't forget to subscribe to our channel the more you keep on subscribing the more you give us the motivation to do a lot of videos and to give us a better better content and if you um we have our patreon if you want to support us in our patreon just go there man and check our patreon in there um just feel free to you know support us and thank you so much once again and last but not the least we're going to see you in the next video and peace out